Howdy. Thank you for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. We do appreciate it. We are currently in game number two. It's going to be a live versus Ryung in just a moment. Game number one is finished. We had a live topping out Grubby. Grubby's been actually pretty stellar throughout SE2. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but he's been winning quite a bit. So this is a big win for a live. Congrats to him. And we're going to head into game number two. Axiom is in need of a win. They they need this win to get into the playoffs. I believe that's what it's that that's what it is at stake. I that sentence just blew my brain. I'm going to hit the watch button. And there it is. I don't know why that was so difficult. That was not even a tongue twister. I don't know. Dude, you know, sometimes sometimes the brain's like, nope. Yeah. Nope, not going to help you out here. And you're like, ah, I did my best. <laughs> you know, Star Station, uh, it's the sort of map where fast, nimble units rule far longer than they normally would in other situations. Player's going to begin by saying some stuff that is incomprehensible to anyone who doesn't speak ancient Greek. Ah, uh, that the bottom right-hand corner. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so like, that's not ancient Greek, and I'm like, ah, I gotcha. <laughs> bottom right-hand corner, the ace player from Team Axiom. It is Ryung. And in the top left-hand corner, we just saw him take a very nice win versus Grubby from EGTL. Or, oh, excuse me, from Evil Geniuses proper. It is alive. And it bears mentioning, um, just uh, you know, we're at we're at the tail end of the regular season for SC12, so by now. Most of you guys should be familiar with this, but some of you are like, hey, how's the live coming out here again? There is this uh, players can play twice rule in our league, but if they do play twice, they cannot play a third time in that ace match should it go that far. So it's, I always kind of, I'm always curious and interested when I see a player that does come out twice because I'm like, okay, what were they thinking with that? And on the EG side, we see a live coming out twice versus the Axiom roster, which is Crank, Ryung, Alicia, Grubby. And I think that... Oh, and Hart. Okay, so you've got the two Terrans, Ryung and Hart. The two Protoss, Alicia and Crank. And then the... Well, the third Protoss, Grubby. So, I gotta say, you know, our, our manager, I, I'd be curious to know what he was thinking by sending out a live twice because he's very good TVT, very good TVZ, and he has a tough time TVP. I mean, we, we just got done talking about this, but there was a good chance he would hit some Protoss players mm -hmm. or Ryung, mm -hmm. who's a TVT specialist. And, I mean, that's... It's one of those weird spots where that's really... It's kind of funny because it's so easy to have confidence at the choosing stage, you know? Like, yeah. come on, send me out. I'm really good at this map. I know what I'm doing. And then the reveal when the curtains are lifted, you're like, oh, God, are young? Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh, God, another oh, that's another player I'm weak against, you know? So it, it's a very hard balance in this sort of team play uh, format. So I really like the way Alive's chosen to play it out, going for command center first, barracks, and likely a second barracks to follow. And down on the bottom right, Ryung is going for fast gas after barracks. That's pretty exciting to hear. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting exchange. This should be a re... I know what? I'm going to hold my my voice here. It's, it's actually a second Marine coming out. I was thinking it would be a Reaper, and a Reaper's quite strong in its position, of course. Yeah. Um, as long as the Marines don't hit it as it's jumping up the cliff and getting a couple extra shots in there, uh -huh. the Reaper reigns supreme. And that's kind of interesting. He started building the Marine, and then he was like, and, oh, oh, you want Command Center first. All right, I got to get my reactor up right away. Ryung looks like he's positioning himself to do a pretty aggressive factory push after he gets down this Command Center. It's a very common play to make. I mean, we simply look in a live space and go, oh, you don't even have gas started. Right. You're going to struggle against tanks because a live is in kind of one of these funky positions with two barracks. Do you tech up really fast to get tanks of your own and as a result vikings to deal with banshees and other types of harassment or do you stay ultra low tech and try to overwhelm the enemy with just too much bio you can't do something a little bit in between or you'll just get murdered yeah i kind of like this state of tvt where yes we see that the cc of alive is a lot earlier than his opponents but as you said i mean what do you do with that early bio because it's probably a defensive early bio opening in the sense that, like, if a, if a Reaper comes up here, I need twice as much Marine production. Any kind of early Hellion or Banshee play, yes, I'll, of course, need detection via a missile turret or something like that, but I'm going to need a lot of Marines. Aggressively, well, there's Hellions, there's Hellbats, there's tanks. There's a lot of early options that make naked, unupgraded Marines really irrelevant, I would say. Like, not, not, a, <laughs> yeah. not, not really scary at all. It's the sort of thing that will make you want to go to a forum and be like, do Marines really need a buff? Because I was playing with them yesterday, and it was bad. <laughs> wow, Ryung's going for a... Not the fast tank play. He's actually going to be going straight up to Hellions, which is a very sensible play. You can contain an unupgraded player 
Not much he can do about it. Ryung also teching up to the starport. I would imagine that Ryung, oh, there it is. Yeah, Ryung is going for the very fast third command center. Meanwhile, back in a live town. Whoa, same theme that we saw last game. Getting all his add-ons ASAP. Getting his upgrades ASAP. Really favoring the heavy bio play. Yeah, he's going three barracks before any kind of factory. There should not be a third CC here in any way, shape, or form. This earlier eBay is, of course, nice for upgrades, but again, Banshees are a very real threat in TBT these days. And if you actually check the vision of Alive, he does not see a damn thing. Um, he's he's. This is like a a design. Just I'm doing my thing, and it's supposed to be a Swiss Army build that that takes everything into account. He moved out with an SCV earlier. It got gunned down mid map. So perhaps he does have a scout component built into this build, but for right now, he's just operating off of assumptions because not even a scan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's much it's much like the way that a young person does dates. Like, here's the <laughs> stories that I'm going to tell, and whatever she says, I'm just going to say these things, and I'm not going to interact in the slightest. And and that works up to a point, right? You. <laughs> what is this in Marauder? Starcraft? <laughs> yeah, what is Marauder doing? <laughs> He's marching off on his own. He's going to be the weak link that will be eliminated by these Hellions, or be completely intimidating to these Hellions. So that yeah. pulls back alive. Uh, it's going to have to be wary of this upcoming medevac, but is transitioning himself back into marine tank. So if Alive holds this off, then he'll be able to snap back and apply a lot of pressure mid that. He does have stim completed. Actually, excuse me, it's seconds away from completing here. About 10 more seconds. Unfortunately, I don't know that it'll be super relevant to this drop. That is, if Rion goes forward, he's going to come in, sees the marine, says, nah, not, not right now. I'm going to back away. The nice thing about this for Ryung... He doesn't have to head home with this. He could just wait. If this Bioforce does decide to move out, then he goes ahead and drops anyways. We could see that actually, he might not even wait. He might just circle around. And there's nothing wrong with this on this map. I mean, um, there's so much space in the middle that the Hellions can't really control it that well because okay. there's just too many angles. I mean, you think about something like Neo Planet S. Hellions really can say, oh, yeah, I'm preventing things down this lane. Blah, period, done. But on this map, having those Hellions floating up in the backside is going to be a much more persistent threat than leaving them at the front. So I like that play a lot. Ryung pulling back and getting his stim, getting his tech lab. Um... Oops, a little late on his supply depots. Uh, a little unfortunate, but starting to catch back up with the upgrades as well. What do you think about... I mean, we have we have tanks already coming out for Ryung. He's got one down in the low ground. A second one does pop out here. Uh -huh. You take a look at the Marine count. It's 27 to 11, so obviously the opening from Alive allows him to have a hell of a lot more Marines. And just now it's third CC. What do you think about these two builds? Because it is going to, at least at first glance, going to be Marine tank versus Marine tank. Um, alive now adding that tech lab on his. Do you like the, the heavier marine count, or do you favor the early tank count? I'm a much bigger fan of the earlier marine count. Okay. I mean, in general, but that's just because I like to be an attacking player. But specifically on this map, removing me from the equation, this is an open, wide-out map. Ryung doesn't even have good angles to place his units. And of course, here's Alive finding a single tank and picking that off. And how many tanks does he have left? He only has a single one and immediately picking off one oh, tech wow. lab and tech lab number two. This is exactly why I like this set of early marines it can do huge damage and we see all the scvs falling we see darting up picking off a second tank and as alive retreats you know in the medevac he lost was the empty one too i mean it, he does lose eight marines in a medevac but if you trade that for the two tech labs I, yeah. were both of them upgrading or just the one i think one completed the combat shield the other one had stim though which is a a massive upgrade that upgrade basically says hey you now cannot come out of your base because if you do it's a one-way trip, potentially, and, and that's a huge risk. So Alive scores a big victory there. Yeah, I mean, th that is something that is very hard to take into account in your build. I mean, a lot of people know what happens if they lose six to eight workers early on. Okay, I know how the pacing of my build's going to work. You don't plan a response for having missed an early stim. Yeah. And we even see, a, oh, geez, we all missed and only just now started. That was... It was totally not his bad. It was a poltergeist, all right? That's, that's a hard <laughs> thing to stomach when you go back and click on that tech lab and you realize, oh, my God, I didn't I didn't restart Stim. Like you, want, you want some reason other than yourself for that. But fortunately for Ryung, that's just a live's great pressure. Yep, we're going to have this tower vide for here as well. And actually, oh, my gosh, the bad keeps getting badder. That's not really a word, but we're going to we're gonna work with it. Ryung. There it is. Getting clever, tries to go after that, that tower battle, but ends up costing him a medevac and, and all the units in it. A drop now with the natural. 
this stim is so abusive. I mean, he stims, oh, kills a bunch of stuff, and then flies away. And without stim, you actually can't chase down that that medevac. You otherwise could with stim. You could, of course, run it down and, and make it cost something. <laughs> you, don't, you don't even sound good in a complaint, right? Was, right? Oh, God, how do you beat stim without stim? And people are like, well, you just get the stim, okay? You're like, I can't. He <laughs> killed it. So alive now, churning out of six barracks, and that's actually quite a bit more than you normally have. Uh, it, well, normally you have five barracks, but a six barracks with a reactor at this phase, when we're hitting 14 minutes, that's generally when a player will be adding on his additional barracks who doesn't actually have that six typically at this time. Alive has better upgrades. He has more tanks. He has more marines. He has more SCVs. He's he, killed 29 harvesters in this. You're 25, excuse yeah. me. I mean, if they if they both ordered chicken fingers from a restaurant, I mean, Alive would have more chicken fingers. Get more he eat more too. He started yeah. eating Ryungs. <laughs> so Alive's going to push out here. Now, this is that, that trouble that Day9 and I were talking about earlier on. So you can see that Ryung obviously doesn't have a sensor tower. He can't afford anything like that. And he's actually having a tough time holding his own tower at this point in time. The Hellions, again, getting deflected there. Alive's going to go right down the middle of the field, but the danger could have been if he approached from the right side of that third base. You don't need to kill the base. You only need to reach it with your long-range tanks, and that can be a big problem for Ryung. Mm -hmm. It's 2-0. Versus 1-0 right now. Live is getting himself in position. Ryung, no doubt, sweating a little bit here. I mean, this is yeah. a rough place to play. Um, oh. It's just so... Oh. Gotta be careful. <sighs> I mean, when you're in those t tense situations, you know, a little single misclick if you got the moist palms and, you know, <laughs> it gets a little under the mouse pad and you miss the tracking, you're going to lose every single one of your Marines because the tank lines, once siege, are really impenetrable by Marines. You have to be very clever with your counter tank placement. Yeah, it's such a precarious situation right now. There's a big dead man zone right out here. And, of course, I'd love to see numbers on this if some some super nerd out there has been tracking this, but I feel like the guy in a TVT that pushes out and is starting to, to blockade his opponent, I feel like that win percentage is going to be a lot higher. It's such a, it's such a controlling, powerful place to be because I feel like if Ryung at this point in time, he's missing out on things like he's not scanning his opponent's base. He's not, he's not uh, hitting every cycle of production in terms of harvesters right now. He's so concerned with his aggression out here and little moves like this is going to cost him because of that aggression being just outside his doorstop. Whereas behind this, Alive, he's adding a fourth CC. But honestly, with this money he has, he could be building like three CCs right now if he wanted. He has all the, the decision-making in the world to do. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you just look at Ryung's vision, I think that's the most telling tale. He kind of has this island of vision up at the north with a single lone medevac bravely going to a watchtower. And there he's going to see a huge... Oh, God. I mean, you j even with... 160 supply, you still feel pretty anemic without any vision, right. right? You just can't figure out a good angle to move at. You can't see the edge you're trying to exploit. But Ryung, one of the best Terran vs. Terran players in the world, absolutely can figure a way out of this. Oh, just I've seen him climb out of Giganticals, man. He's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. he, he knows what to do. He's got the army. Yeah. So I mean, Oh, actually, the tanks are exposed. Ryung goes forward. He's getting a nice little altercation here for himself, but again, he is going to have to run away, and that will have a tax of sorts. Ryung, down about 30 supply, and I guess where that's a big concern is that we're not talking about a, a 2,000 bank here for Ryung. He's squeezing out every dollar he can just to be down 30 supply against a, a Terran player in Alive that is banking, has added those extra orbitals, and is soon to be mining off of a fourth base. So the bad's going to get worse for Ryung unless he can do something like a doom drop, a counterattack, or get a really good exchange of tanks or something like that. Yeah, but I mean, Doom Drops, as effective as they are when they land, I mean, I wonder if Ryung sure. would ever let one of those <laughs> pop down into his base. I mean, he's already getting his tanks into great position. Alive is already trying to find good angles, and it's really this one medevac at the back that's keeping Ryung on his toes. And I think Ryung knows where his edge needs to be at. It needs to be once he hits max, so he's just going to chill for now. Yeah, he's going to chill and bide his time. And you actually bring up a really good point. I talk about Doom Drops, but how the hell... Could Ryung ever count on that happening? And again, I feel like that's another advantage that Alive has from being the aggressor, from being out on the map. You can't mm -hmm. Doom Drop because the second Alive sniffs out that, wait a second, this army's missing, sure, we'll go into a base trade scenario, but Alive's going to jumpstart that by miles. 
Wow, so they all actually have the, the same set of buildings. I mean, as the siege up is going down, I mean, both of them are just building a lot of tanks and marines, have about the same count, but nine barracks out for alive. He also has a slew of command centers parking outside the front of his base. Yeah. Rion has just been macroing his heart out. He's, play, he's been playing from behind for most of the game. He's trying to gobble up vision, and I'm really impressed. I mean, look at Rion's vision. He now has three of the four watchtowers. He's scanning in the main, and suddenly it's Alive who's playing a little bit in the dark. Yeah, and he's moving around trying to kind of alleviate that darkness that you talk about. It's it's so important to be guarding those, or not necessarily guarding, but occupying those towers so you can have this movement. And look at this. Ryung sees a moment where he says, you know what? I am the guy controlling the tower. That sensor tower does have a soft spot to the left of it. If I can get three medevacs dropped into the main and start cutting down that production, I could claw my way back into this. That's part of the danger of being max like Alive is. You don't have units coming out. It's stopped. Alive, however, is playing really well. He does have a tank and a handful of Marines inside that main, but that's three medevacs and Marines. Uh oh, that's going to be four actually with oh, this one out here. Oh, that's going to be a lot of damage in the main. And I mean, Ryung has already built up the tank force that he needs to hold things off. He doesn't really have extra bases, but I mean, what are you going to do with extra bases sure. right now? Both players actually don't really want more than sixty some SCVs. Here comes Ryung's drop in the main, and there's nothing there. Uh oh, oh, the medevac needs to not die to the turret. Alive's going to snap to it. The tank does siege, but of course that's at the front, and there's enough Marines here where that goes down almost immediately. Missile turret actually gets a medevac. A little bit of a miscontrol here from Ryung. And Alive says, you know what? I don't think that's enough units for me to come all the way home. It looks like, well, as I say that, he's going to split off some Marines just to take it serious enough. Ryung's going to slide over here and try uh -huh. to protect his newly formed fourth base. Well, even with killing all those depots, Alive already has so many command centers on the map that he's well uh, equipped to deal with this. The siege by Alive is the big threat for Ryung right now. The Planetary Fortress in range. Alive got into the money position. All his tanks in the right spot. Yeah, he's threatening that Planetary Fortress, albeit just by one tank. And Ryung, he's sieging up over here too as, as well. He's starting to react to it. There's the stream of Marines coming out from Alive. Whoops, miscontrol there from the observer. I apologize. But he does cut down all those Marines. And in doing so, he lost a couple of barracks. He lost some depots. So certainly, it's not the you know it, it sucked, but it didn't suck so bad that I don't even I don't think Alive's in danger of losing his lead right now. Yeah, I mean it's kind of hard for Alive to lose a lead in this in this much of a lead. I mean he has these extra command centers, which means that when he loses SCVs, he simply doesn't replace them. His building count is absurd. Twelve barracks! I mean, how do you battle that? That's going to be an extra ten or so marines every minute plopping on out of those factories. So, I mean, Ryung has planetary fortresses already up and established all around the map. He can just move his SCVs around. Right yeah. now, Ryung is on pure defense mode. You can see a little bit of uh, marine bombing going on. Both players trying to thin out their tank counts. But you said it, Day9, this is such a money position for these tanks. They're hitting that planetary fortress. They're cutting down a couple of the mineral piles as well. So this base is right now a bit of a... Well, it's not an asset is what I'm trying to say for Ryung. Ryung's going to snap over. He doesn't want to see this army retreat. But behind this, as you had said, there's so much production for Alive. And I don't know how Alive just loses. I mean, Alive could lose this army, but he'll trade. You know what I mean? He's not going to get smashed in this position. Yeah, and he already has so much production already rallied into mid. He's heading on more factories, more barracks. He's going to be at four factories. Looks like 14 barracks. He's oh, already, uh, he already has plus three for his tanks. He already has three, three for his Marines. Ryung is matching in the three, three department, but Alive says, you know what? I don't quite have enough production structures. I'm at 5.5K, 2.5K. Let's get some more star ports. And there's a whole <laughs> other army moving across the top end. And that army is actually approaching another critically important base. It looks like Ryung's going to go for it. There's the stem. The Marines got a great concave, but they are taking massive dam damage from the tanks. It looks like Alive is going to pull back here, but he should be able to trade up pretty well with his own Marines. And that base on the right side is going to go down damn near for free. So he's going to march in here into this third base. Actually, it's mostly mined out, but it's still important. There's two orbitals here, and Ryung's got to get over here. Jeez, Alive has locked this down. Like, he is 
Stormy, and he's gonna pick off one command center in a matter of seconds. He's gonna pick off the second command center in a matter of seconds. All the SCVs disintegrate. Ryung tries to pull back and send in more of his Marines. And look at the production tab! Two medevacs, yeah. four tanks, 19 Marines in production at the same time. What the hell? He's got a supply lead. He has a massive bank. Ryung is trailing in all things considered in TBT. Um, I think the only place he's got him is if I look here. Tanks, yeah, 13 to the 6 of Alive, but Alive is building three at a time, as you said. Ryung has a moment here where he's got more tanks, but I don't want to make it sound like that's some kind of significant advantage. It's it's nice. You'd rather have more tanks, but I think the Marine count's going to be the big critical number here. 67 and more coming. 67 with 19 on the way. Oh, now he's at 78 versus 47. 15 tanks in just the right position can do it, and it looks like Ryung is aware of this. He's very cautiously leapfrogging his tanks forward. And it's it's tough because we're going to get into another situation, Day9, where, okay, Ryung gets up here. He's going to challenge that 12 o'clock, what do we call this, the the sixth base, the fourth base, something like that. But it, it's, it's fairly irrelevant for Alive, whereas Alive can afford to do exactly what he's doing. He's actually going to break away with a marine hit squad that could basically one-shot this freaking planetary. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the marines already getting in position at the south, and it looks like Ryung demonstrating some impressive positional awareness of his own, but like you were saying, the tank count's just not going to be that much of a lead for long. Already oh up to nine tanks, 89 marines, but... He's making Ryung five more orbitals, Sean. Jeez, where does he even have space for them? I guess around the left lip. Yeah, there it is. I don't even know the fancy word for that. What what kind of expansion timing is that? What is that called? Uh, I mean, I guess each one of those counts is like .01th <laughs> of an expansion. It's an orbital timing. <laughs> orbital rushing. He's orbital so, rushing. So, I mean, Ryung has a huge amount of gas. <laughs> hardly any minerals. Yeah. Hardly any mineral patches to mine from, save for the south base. What a great game by Alive. Yeah, Alive's just been in the driver's seat all game long. I mean, Ryung has clawed his way back in where he is now probably for the first time the aggressor, and he has actually locked down that 6 o'clock base. We're going to see these Marines test the waters, but those are three tanks anchored by a planetary fortress, and actually, oh, don't do it. Yes, yeah, I was going to say, what a cute idea. <laughs> he was thinking about dropping on it, but those <laughs> Marines would have happily eaten up those medevacs. So, I mean... Ryung is kind of eliminating these bases. Yeah. But Battle Cruiser Yamato Cannon is being researched and alive. He's had enough. There's the huge drop up in center mid. We see the tanks from alive sieging up. The Marine output for damage is too big. Oh, my alive God. Alive murders them. Jeez, what the? Oh, my God. Alive is just in such a commanding position, shoving everything back. The map is covered in green. I mean,. Ruby Ross would love a live supply. <laughs> the drop play on top of the tanks was a really nice touch. If he had enough firepower to probably steam through it, but Alive didn't get to this advantage against Ryung by doing what the rest of us do. He sees images and pictures and places the rest of us mere mortals simply do not. This top right side main base perhaps might get delayed. Uh, well, no, there's three Marines going to come up here and challenge it. Ryung's going to snap in, though. He wants to go after these tanks. He does get them unseized, but backs away. And he is actually stuck between a rock and a hard place at this point in time. You don't really see people surround a Terran in TVT. But Alive, given the showcase, Alive brings his team to 2-0 with two solid victories. What a win. Yeah, I got it. What a win indeed. I mean, Grubby and then... Okay, Grubby, uh, you know, okay, I get that. He is a Protoss player, Alive's weakest matchup. But Grubby has had a tough time with these Korean Terran players in the past. And, and even in, in game, it was interesting because I feel like Grubby defends the first attack really well, but then he kind of throws his army away and we're like, ah, okay, shoot. There goes, you know, going full foreigner, as, as, as some people would say. In game two, it's like, this is Ryung, man. You're in his wheelhouse. This is what Ryung does better than 99% of the freaking people out there in, in the top tier professional gaming. Uh, but Alive was always ahead. And, it, and with this kind of strange... Wings of Liberty, Marine first heavy opening, but that drop, yeah. picking off Stim, killing the first two tanks so that there was no real advantage from Ryung's build, and, and of course with the Stim snipe, uh, a severe disadvantage. Yeah, you know, I, I, it's kind of amazing the fact that Ryung, with his world-class play, I mean, 
Alive just picked it apart. Yeah. Just was in control start to finish. And we do tend to see a lot of back and forth games. Or sometimes we'll see a moment where a lead happens and the win closes out shortly thereafter. But, I mean, for the whole game, Alive just made Ryung look like just some some standard grandmaster planka. Just mm-hmm. some guy, right? It was really impressive to see someone do something that efficient when it's versus one of the best of the best. And, you know, tip of the hat to Ryung as well, because he was under a lot of pressure all game long. Getting your stim, sni- stim sniped, guys, is actually... It's almost a GG. It's almost a GG moment in, the, in this in this regard. We could see that that was the severe disadvantage that he actually suffered. Yeah. But um, he did get to push out mid-map. He did defend his fourth base quite well. I feel like like the only thing I could say was missing from him is I would have liked to have seen... And this is caster speculation. I would have liked to have seen him maybe float out an orbital and go take a sneaky bottom left main base or something like that and just dump oh, meals yeah. on it all game long. Just give that a shot because I feel like if you're way behind just making Marine tank and relying on better engagements and stuff like that, it is doable. We've seen it, but it was up to Alive to mess it up as opposed to I feel like Ryung to finesse him out of that advantage because as you, I, I mean, I brought this up in the game and you were like, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Like the Doom Drop, not available to you. Um, trading Marine Tank, well, if the other guy's like 10 times more rich, then you're not really trading, you're just kind of wasting yourself away. So I would have liked to have seen something like that. But I mean, gosh, I mean, Alive's just showing an, a supreme confidence yeah. across the board in all matchups. I mean, we obviously didn't see a TVZ in the last two games because that would require a third game. <laughs> but his TVZ is also looking very, very strong these days. And the next match, as you said, a real exciting one coming up Alicia versus Revival. Yeah, and it's interesting too because you know earlier I was talking about picking the the player that plays twice, and of course in this cha- in this situation, tip of the hat to our manager Cody. He picked the live to go out twice, and he's like, "You idiot!" In control of obviously, I pick and go twice. Nude win twice here, but it, it's it's Red City, at Day Nine's favorite map. LOL, not ob- obviously not, but we've seen a lot of Protoss here. Alicia's come out um, in the in this situation, and, and many Protoss before him. But in this case, we're seeing revival in a ZVP, which I do think is weird. Um, it's not It's not like a Zerg graveyard, but this has been a Protoss map in the past. The really only solution I see for a, a revival is to rely on heavy airplay. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 great for air in theory, but <laughs> Protosses will go for three Stargate air as well to answer that <laughs> Zerg call. We'll have to see which of these players will utilize the map to their advantage to take the win. Axiom's currently trailing 0-2, EG leads 2-0. And uh, they've got them on the ropes. It's a best of seven, of course. They do have a couple more matches to go. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a quick commercial break. When we come back, it's going to be Alicia versus Revival. We'll see you soon. Yahoo! 